The Bible Treasury. A monthly magazine of papers on scriptural subjects. Article 2 Part 67 of 95, Volume 15, 1884 and 1885. Scripture Imagery. J.C. Bailey. The Sanctuary. The Ark, the Mercy Seed. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, Exodus 25 verse 8, etc. The primary principle of worship was enunciated in that word sanctuary. The dignity and majesty of God are of such nature that no worship can be acceptable that is not holy, and, as there was no word in human language that would convey the true meaning of this, it has to be conveyed by physical types, ordinances, and emblems. There were, indeed, words which conveyed part of the meaning. All those terms which carry the idea of consecration, korban, taboo, fetish, signify that a thing must be kept apart for the deity's service and must not be made common use of. This principle we see all day around us. The head of the house, of the firm, or of the state, will object to have other persons using his implements. He says, that is my pen, or sword, or scepter, leave it alone. He would not use them if they become common and unclean by general handling. Nay, do we not all extend this kind of sequestration over our immediate belongings to a certain extent, and feel somewhat resentful if people roughly use and coarsely handle them? Does not every mother say at times to her child, you must not touch that, it is your father's. And this is not merely a question of dignity, one of the chief reasons for this exclusive appropriation is in order that the instruments may be kept clean and fit for the master's use, which would be impossible if everyone be allowed to take them. Precisely the same considerations apply to the use of instruments appropriated by God, but the elements which disqualify them from being fit for his service, being moral and spiritual, are naturally little understood by men. Hence they needed an elaborate ritual, originally, to enable them to understand this word sanctify, that it does not merely mean keep apart, like taboo, korban, or fetish, but it means, keep apart in purity. For instance the priests separated to many of the Greek and Roman gods organized as part of their worship the most horrible and nameless crimes, and it was generally true of any idolatrous priests of old, that so long as he observed certain exclusive attitudes and forms he could be as evil as he liked, as now in such places as Dahomey where a person or thing is juju, set apart for the deity, j-e-w-h-e, but it may be the foulest person in the tribe or the most unclean thing, a serpent. Frequently. The gigantic high priest of the Hawaiians was perhaps the most wicked man in that hemisphere, he would kill a man for treading on his shadow. But a priest sanctified to Jehovah must avoid evil, for that is especially what is abhorrent to his God, and, since no man but one has avoided it altogether, the ordinances taught him to live in the habitual condemnation of evil, and provided him with a means of cleansing himself, when from casualty or infirmity he was defiled by earthly contacts, but they made no provision whatever for his wanton continuance in it. The directions for making the ark are given first of all, even before the building in which it was to be placed. Who but God would think of the furniture before the house? Yet the reason is plain, the ark was the type of Christ, and consequently everything had to be built out from and in connection with it, for it sets him forth as the core from which everything flows centrifugally, and the center to which everything tends centripetally in God's system of worship. Around it all the people were to assemble, when it moved they were to follow, when it stopped they were to encamp, till it ultimately led them through the Jordan into the promised land, arrived thither, it is deposited in the magnificent temple constructed for its reception where it still maintained its central and dominant position. It was made of a fragrant wood, signifying the humanity of Christ, covered with gold, within and without, the symbol of his divine majesty. It contained the tablets of the law, thy law is within my heart Psalm 40 verse 8, also the pot of manna, the treasured memorial of his humiliation here on earth, and, subsequently, Aaron's rod that budded, the emblem of priestly power and authority. Upon it was placed the mercy seat, and upon that rested the Shekinah, the visible semblance of the divine presence. That is, Christ is the basis on which mercy is exercised and dispensed, 
the mercy seat rests on, and is in a sense part of, the ark, see note 1, the mercy seat is beaten out of solid gold, however, no wood or human element in the divine mercy, it is absolute, and beaten out of the same piece of gold are the cherubim, one at each end, emblems of judgment. See note 2. Justice and mercy are thus met in Christ and combined in favor of the approaching worshipper, for the cherubs' faces are toward each other and toward the seat, that is to say, justice answers to the face of justice, and, looking upon the mercy seat, sees the atoning blood sprinkled thereon. Note 1. Christ Jesus whom God hath set forth to be a mercy seat, same word as in Hebrews 9 verse 8, high lasterian end of note 1. Note 2. See paper 4 for a detailed explanation. End of note 2. They were commanded to make staves to carry the ark by. These were symbols of itinerancy, and express to us the manner in which our Lord accompanies his people in all their wanderings through the wilderness, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Until they crossed Jordan they were commanded to leave the staves in their rings, but when they reach their goal in the promised land they take out the staves, 1 Kings 8 verse 8, for now, they were to wander no more. There was to be a golden crown around the top of the ark. This would be about the edge of the mercy seat, and thus we see what is expressed in the words thy glory crowns thy grace. Men usually connect crowns with physical conquests and material successes, not with patience and forbearance. The nine crowns of heraldry are of this nature. The Romans had indeed the corona civis which was awarded for the rescue of a citizen in battle, and the corona obsidian alice for a general who saved an army, but the first was of oak leaves, and the second of grass or wild flowers, while their crowns for deeds of prowess and slaughter were of gold. No man ever thought that there was anything glorious in grace that a crown of beauty and dignity should be awarded to it, we had derided it and awarded it a crown indeed, but, of thorns. But God's thoughts are not as ours. He beheld his glory, the glory not of outward dignity as Messiah or Son of Man, though these also are his, but the inward moral beauties of divine nature as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Grace is poured into thy lips, therefore God hath blessed thee forever.